Hello everyone, we are going to integrate this function today. We have a product of e to the negative 2x and then times sine of 3x, right? So we have this product right here with an exponential function and a trig function. And so in this case, we are going to use integration by parts again because that's a product. So hopefully we can use it to reverse the product rule. And so now what happened is that we are going to set up our u, v, and then du, dv table. And so um, we'll talk about how to choose u or what is the strategy of choosing u in the dv. Okay, so let's start the problem. Um, yeah, so let me let me set up the table. So our table would be u equals something and then du equals something, right? And then we have the, um, the v equals something and then the dv equals something. Okay, so you may ask me, um, which one should we choose for u? Can we choose u to the negative 2x for u and then or so we choose u to be uh, sine 3x. It actually doesn't matter for this type of problem. So when you see an exponential function and a trig function multiply together, and when you see this kind of problem, uh, it's up to you whether you want to choose u or dv. I will just talk about just one really like um, a preference for which one that you you want to pick for you. It depends on the coefficient of the x here. So see that um, the exponent for this exponential function here, that's a linear function, and then the same thing for the argument for the sine, right? So that's that's also a linear function. So in this case, you just look at the coefficient. Uh, whichever one has a coefficient of one, then you would probably want to choose that as the dv. But in this case, they are not one, right? So we don't really have a preference. And it depends on whether you like to integrate the exponential function or you like to integrate the trig function. So it's probably easier usually to integrate the exponential function than the trig function. So we'll, we'll just let u be sine of 3x in, the, in this case. But again, it doesn't matter. So you can let u be e to the negative 2x. It, it makes no difference, right? Okay, so now let's let's put that down. Okay, so u is what? Sine 3x, sine 3x here. And then dv would be e to the negative 2x and then dx. Okay, so now you need to differentiate the u, which will give us cosine, right? We'll, we'll get cosine. And don't forget there was a chain rule here. You need to multiply by three. So our du would be three cosine three x and then dx. I guess I need to, um, I need to move this a little bit so that I'm not too close. Okay, now it looks better. Okay, so we have um, we need to integrate the dv, right? Which will give us e to the negative two x. And then don't forget, uh, due to the chain rule, when you differentiate e to the negative two x, you are going to generate a negative one, negative two, right? Negative two. So we are going to put a negative one half here to cancel out that the um, the derivative of the inner function for this exponential function here. So we need to multiply by negative one half. So, so that's that's the table, right? Okay, now, once you get the table set up, you are going to start writing down the right-hand side. But I should just point out to you that I um, for this particular type of problem, we should actually give this integral a name, right? We can just call it, um, you can call it whatever letter. So I usually would just call it b of x. So um, this is not b times x. This is just, just the function notation. So we say that b is a function in, in terms of x. So we call this b of x here. Okay, uh, what happens is that we just to, just to reduce writing too much. I'm, I'm just going to just write b right here instead of copying the whole integral. So that's why we give it a name. So it's a lot easier to, to write and it saves space too. Um, okay, so we put that here. So we can see that b, right? Now remember b is a function, right? It's not a constant. Okay, so b is equal to B represents this integral on the left-hand side of the integration by parts formula. We are going to write down the right-hand sides right now. So u times v, u times v is the sine 3x times negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. So putting those together, I'm going to put the constant first and then the exponential function and then the trig function. So we'll put that here. So u times v. 
is negative one half, and then e to the negative two x. And then what is that? What's the other one? The other one would be uh, sine three x. Yeah, so sine three x. Okay, now the next step is to put down the integral of v du. All right, so we are going to put down a minus sign, and then the integral, and then v is this function right here. So we'll put that here. Negative one half e to the negative two x, and then times three cosine of three x, and then dx. Okay, so I feel like I'm just getting into that that spacing trouble here. So maybe I need to just just make it smaller. And so now that, that we have no problem anymore. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so that's that. Uh, it's a good idea to simplify this expression here before we continue and see what's going on, right? So we are going to continue in the next line and then just do a simplifying step. So we have negative one half e to the negative two x and then sine three x. Okay, so now let's look at this carefully. It's a, it's a big mess right here. It's not too many things, but you can just you just need to be more careful with the signs. So we have a negative sign here and another negative sign here. So we are going to get a positive quantity, right? So our sign would be positive here in this case. Uh, any constants, you can take them outside the integral, which will be 3 times the 1 half, right? So we'll get 3 over 2. And then the integral... And then what's next? E to the negative two x, and then cosine times no, co, no, sorry, cosine of three x, right? There is no, it's not multiplication. It's never multiplication. So let's just write that here. So e to the negative two x, and then cosine three x, and then dx. Okay, so now you will start asking yourself. Can we integrate this one directly? We cannot, right? It, it's, it's the same type of situation as we have in the original integral here. We have an exponential function, which is the same exponential function, and then times now a different trig function. But it's instead of having sine here, we have the cosine here. Um, so how do you handle this situation? We are just going to do the integration by parts one more time here, and see what's going on. So let's do that. Let's. Let's do the integration by parts one more time. Okay, so this time I'm going to use screen to, to, to set up the UV and then the UDV table. And then, um, yeah, so we are going to use screen to highlight the this negative integral of VDU. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so when we do that here, we are going to get what? So let's see. Now, when you do it this second time here, you may be wondering, should I, this time, instead of letting u be the trick function, should I let, just let u be e to the negative two x this time, just to make things easier? I would tell you, do not do that, right? Um, what happens is that if in the first time of doing the integration by parts, in the first time of choosing a u, if you chose u to be a trick function, in the second time that you're doing it, you still need to let u be the trick function so that we can continue with the problem. You, I will show you why. Okay, so we are going to let u be the cosine 3x here. And then what about the other one? The dv would now be, again, the exponential function, e to the negative 2x, and then dx. And then we find du and the v, right? So let's just find them. Here we have negative 3 sine 3x and then dx and then again too close and then uh, the v the v would be we actually did it in the previous step here right we can just copy unless you did it wrong the first time then you get it wrong the second time so we have that here okay so that's that's good 
Okay, now we're ready to continue, go back to the problem, right? Go back to the big picture and then continue with the problem here. So we still have the B on the left-hand side of the equation and then the right-hand side would be, now don't forget that you still have this one here, right? When you're doing the integration by parts, you are actually working on this integral here, but don't forget that there was still this, this original turn right here. So we'll put that here which would be negative one half e to the negative two x and then sine three x and then now what plus three over two now it will be a bracket because you eventually you need to distribute the three over two to all the terms inside the brackets right so uh it's really because when you do integration by parts you you are going to get more than one turn in here so let's just do that so uv right so we have negative one half times e to the negative two x with the cosine. So we'll put that here, which would be, yeah, I got to change the color, right? So we have negative one half. Oh, actually, no, no, no. This one is just the UV, right? So I'm not going to highlight that yet. Okay, so we have negative one half and then e to the negative two x and then cosine three x. Okay, so what's next? The next... The next step is to put down the integral. And so the next step is to put down the integral of VDU. Okay, so just to avoid this table gets in the way, so I'm just going to move it up higher. And so we have what? We have the V, right? So we have negative one half e to the negative two x and then times negative three sine three x and then dx so let me just do a quick check and see if i include everything in copywriting correctly so we have negative one half e to the negative two x so that's there and then the du is the negative three sine three x with a minus sign here okay so i still need to Put the bracket just to end our line here. Okay, so that's that. Now, it feels like there are a lot of turns, right? Um, we should just clean this up. We should just clean this up. And so we have negative one half e to the negative two x, and then sine three x. And then. Um, if you want, you can start distributing this 3 over 2 to the turn in here. So we are going to get negative 3 over 4, right? Uh, yeah, so 3 times 1 is 3, and then 2 times 2 is 4, right? With uh, There was a minus sign here, so it will be negative 3 over 4. And then e to the negative 2x, cosine 3x. And then now here comes the part where you need to worry about a lot of things at the same time so we have minus 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 so there are three negative signs here we are going to get a minus sign here and then what is that that's one half that's three that's another three over two so that those three numbers multiply together we can do the numerator first three times one times three which will be nine so we get nine over Okay, so we have two times two, and then there was no more, right? So you just get the four at the bottom. So we have four. Then what do we get here? We are going to get the integral of e to the negative two x, and then sine three x. So that's our integral. Now, when you look at this integral right here, you feel like, Okay, so we are not getting anywhere. We are going, we are actually creating a new expression right here, but it's worse than the original integral. And it feels like if we just keep doing it, we are go just going to um, alternate between the sine 3x and then the cosine 3x and the sine 3x and just we are going in a loop here, right? It feels like we are not getting anywhere. We cannot finish with the problem. But remember, we just give we just gave at the beginning that this integral e to the negative two x sine three x a name, right? We call this this b, and b is actually what we are trying to figure out here. So, do you see that we can now replace this by the function b, right? So we can call this b, and so we are going to get b equals negative one half e to the negative two x, 
and then sine three x minus three over four e to the negative two x cosine three x. And what is this? This is really just nine over four. That whole thing is turning to b. So we just get b here. But remember, we are really just finding. We are just finding b. So if we're finding b here, what do we do now? We just need to move it. We just need to move this turn to the left hand side of the equation. And so we are going to get what? If you're adding 9 over 4b to just 1 times b, right? We are going to get 13 over 4b. So we have that 13 over 4b. Right? So 1 plus 9 over 4. So 4 over 4 plus 9 over 4. We'll get 13 over 4b, which will give us later 1 half e to the negative 2x, and then sine 3x. Minus 3 over 4 e to the negative 2x, and then cosine. 3x and then now what yeah because we're trying to find b right so we just need to multiply by the reciprocal this 13 over 4 which is 4 over 13 and then we can figure out the final answer yeah so when you see this kind of function you actually need to do it twice and then after doing it the second time, you are going to get back the same integral as the original integral here, which will can now you can isolate this integral here and then and then figure out the final answer. So let's do that here. Okay, so our final answer would just be b equals uh leg one half times four over thirteen. So let's just do it on the side. We have leg one half times four over thirteen. So cancel the two and the four which will give us negative 2 over 13 e to the negative 2x and then sine 3x. And then the other one, the other one is what? The other one is negative 3 over 4 times 4 over 13. So cancel the 4, you are going to get negative 3 over 13. And then e to the negative 2x cosine 3x. And then what do we have now? We also have the integration, um, the constant integration. So we have the plus C. Now this C is a what? This C is a constant. See that it, it feels like C and B have the same nature here, but remember, I just need to just point that out really. It's really important that this C right here, this is a constant of integration. What about the other one? The other one, the b is a function right here, right? So this is a function of x. Yeah, so make sure that you see that they're not the same, even though I omitted the, the parentheses with the x in there, but we are still saying that b is a function. Okay, so that's it. This, this is a long problem. And I will do um, the same problem again using the table method of integration by parts and see how that goes. Okay, so thank you for watching. See you next time.